Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I'm a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on January 15th, 2022 at approximately 1140 AM PST. Things are intriguing in this world right now. And to be clear, I was I came back to this life for one primary reason, and that is to spread a message to everyone in existence that working together, we can make this a better world for virtually everybody. Now, there's certainly going to be some people that are not happy. You know, there are going to be people that would rather be in dominant control positions, but the problem is that those people are missing karmic law. There's only three laws I follow. Be true to yourself first. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. Energy out, energy in. Now, society is going down the same path I've seen it go down multiple times over the centuries. And yes, I do recall many of my past lives. I think I've documented 18. And I'm starting to fill them in. I'm actually starting to put them together in a book form. As it stands right now, that'll be a couple of years down the road because I've already got five books listed that I'm aiming at having in production this year. Okay. Any now, as far as the books I've written, I'm taking the information I've got and combining it into smaller books or into novels, depending, because I write children's stories, self-help, reference manual, and science fiction, science fantasy, as well as poetry. Okay. All of these books that I've already got in production, you can re you can get ordered directly through me at any one of the contact points below. If you look at the bottom of this video, you'll find a whole pile of different contact points. You'll find a whole different, uh, whole pile of different books I've already got in print. But changing the direction society is going is going to require all of us. Now, I can tell you the tools that are working for me. These are the same tools I personally use, the same philosophies in life. And the fact they work for me, I have no doubt they'll work for you as well. Now, we start with the obvious issue. You have, it is absolutely imperative you get a look in your own heart and ask yourself simply, am I content with the way my life is going? If the answer is no, then it's time to make a change for you. Okay. Now, if you're content with the way your life is going, stay on track, but it's still imperative to get it organized. Now, one of the key factors that I'm very happy with myself is I picked a goal, one of the, one of the many goals I've got for this life, for this year, and I encourage you to pick 12 goals, 12 major goals that you desire to get accomplished. I, have, I haven't listed all 12 of mine, but one of the ones that I have listed is to drop below 200 pounds. Now, I am only aiming at losing a pound and a half to two pounds a week. Okay. And the reason for that is, you know, I'm only 215 right now, so it shouldn't be much of a struggle. But these new medications that are coming out, and these new concoctions, people go, oh, buy my concoction because it'll drop, you know, you can drop 40 pounds in, in a month. Well, you probably can, but you got to worry about the about the side effects. That kind of weight drop means you're going to have a lot, of, you are likely to have a lot of loose skin. And I don't know about you, but I always found that to be less appealing than being overweight. And I'm no fan of being, I'm no fan of being overweight. The worst I hit was 246. And I hit that weight and went, there is no way I'm breaking 250. Well, I'm quite happy to say that I am down at 215 right now and dropping. Okay, so with that in mind, that's one of those goals that I've got that I'm moving forward with. But we have to look in the mirror and go, okay, what am I content with? Okay, now the list of goals that I've got, I think this is the one, I'm not wearing my glasses, obviously. Yeah, nope, that's the one I'm working on. So where is, there it is. Right now, I've got seven goals that I've listed. I've got five books that I desire to put in print this this year. Okay. 
Return to Paradise, which is Return to Paradise, is the final book in this trilogy I've been working on. And in all fairness, this this is not just a trilogy. The Birth of the Wolf Pack is only one book out of out of a out of the fourth trilogy in a combined series. So, Birth of the Wolf Pack obviously is already out. Then we have the end of an epic. It is now out in print. For the moment, these are only now the Birth of the Wolf Pack you can get on Amazon. The end of an epic can only be gotten through me at this point at one of those contact points below. Okay, I just put one of the goals I had because this is this is a children's book, Mr. Dreamcatcher. Now the sequel to this one, Mr. Dreamcatcher Returns, I just put into the printer yesterday. I just put the order into it, so within the next week or two, I should have it available. At which point, it will be added to the bottom of the list. Okay, there, now, on top of that, I've got the dropping the 200, plus I'm going to be wiping out everything in my office that does not have to do with finance, files from 2015 forward, okay, it doesn't have to do with inventory or my painting projects. By doing that, by aiming at all of these targets, I'm checking them off as I go along. Now, of course... The funny part is, once I break the 200, then I've got to keep it down there. And that's going to be a challenge in and of itself. Pick a goal that, you're, that you personally are aiming for. This is not something that other people say you have to do. Because I will tell you, you go, to the, you go to the doctor and the doctor says, you've got to quit smoking or you're going to get cancer. Well, two major factors. One, unless you get that imperative feeling here that you have to, you have to quit. All the doctors in the world can tell you, and it isn't going to matter. The other factor that you have to look at is about 20 years ago, I loved what the Canadian government came out with. Canadian Health Authority came out with this brilliant idea. The number one cause of lung cancer, they said at that time, was breathing. Now, granted, if you stop breathing, you won't have to worry about getting cancer. But I can see an extra complication here. Okay. Pick things around you, like where it comes to organizing your office. The office is the backbone of your house. Not the backbone of the home, but it is the backbone of the house. If you don't have your finances in order, you're not going to keep a roof over your head, you're not going to keep food in the house, and you're not going to keep power on. Okay, so this is why I say get the energy in your, fi in your, in your office, wherever you work on finances. Get the energy running smoothly by removing the clutter. Okay. Now, right now, my office is, is functional as far as where I work on finances. Okay. Very important factor from my standpoint. Get the finances in order, then work out from there and take care of your own home first. Okay. Remember, there was an old saying that was saying that was that I was brought up with, which really boiled down to, you know, if your house is a mess, telling somebody else their house is a mess is kind of like the pot calling the kettle black. Okay, so get your own stuff in order before you start telling people they're doing things wrong. Okay, now the the funny part about this is I'm telling you that, but I'm also telling you I'm not perfect by any means. My house is not in perfect shape. So these are just the steps I'm going through. Now, I didn't get a chance to paint yesterday, so this little guy is still the same color. Okay, technically I could leave the back the way it is, but I'm not going to. Yeah, you know, so I mean, I look at this. Okay, and this character is coming along nicely. And then, of course, this little guy here, this is just a figure I'm working on for one of the characters I play in my games. And again, this is a question of, whoa, gravity works. This is a question of keeping things moving. I have a tendency of working on way too many things at the same time. Okay. 
But I think that comes from getting bored with only doing one. That said, when you're looking at the way your life is going, ask yourself, are you treating other people the way you desire to be treated? Now, I will tell you there are some massive flaws that are taking place right now, and society is on a tailspin. No, I am not a doomsayer because I'm still a firm believer that if we can get this message out to enough people and enough individuals can start changing their own life for what they can for what you consider the better, frankly, this world will start moving a lot more smoothly. Well, you know, first and foremost, we've got to realize governments are necessary for society. But the thing is, you've got to have laws being passed that apply to everybody, regardless of income bracket, regardless of, of your skin color or any other differentiators. Okay, the laws have to apply to everybody. Now, the politicians are not the problem. Well, technically, the politicians are the problem. The government isn't. But individuals in today's society, regardless of the walk of life, are so caught up, it seems, in self-gratification, immediate response. Okay, they're, they're looking for immediate, re immediate attainment, and it doesn't work that way. The effort you put into something quite often makes it far more enjoy enjoyable, far more, more productive than all of a sudden having it handed to you. Okay. This is why I say the only person on the planet, the only person in existence that can be successful for you is you. Now, the religious or the spiritual guidelines that people live by, many go to mainstream religions. Okay, but I keep seeing people argue with each other. I don't, you know, I'm, you know, I'm Christian. I don't believe in this. So that's, that's bad. But every religion I've looked into has said the same thing. I had a conversation one day with, with, and understand, everybody in the religion is not the same. But everybody claiming to be in some religion will have an impact on the other, on the people they interact with. They will have an impact on those people's view of that religion. Okay. And, you know, I've had my run-ins with people. A lot of people have tried to have tried to convert me to different religions. It doesn't work. Do I believe in God? Yeah. But that being said, there's a real reason for that. Aside from being raised Christian. And, you know, and raised to believe in God, raised to believe in Jesus. Aside from that, I've had personal direct communication. Now, you can call that being nuts if you'd like. Okay, as the saying goes, it's a fine line between genius and insanity, and you get to figure out which way things go. Okay, but my beliefs are based on what I've gone through. It's the same as this book. Okay, this little book, Races of the Worlds. The, 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 the races I've dealt with are all documented in here. But that being said... All the races I've dealt with are not documented in this book. This is why I'm working on volume two. Okay. So with that in mind, my outlook on life is based on what I've gone through. Everybody's is. You've had experiences. And the thing we all have in common in that respect is whatever brought you to the position you're in right now is your past. You cannot change it. You can alter how you move forward. Maybe you were taught that a certain type of people are bad. Okay, maybe you were taught that. But you haven't had a direct interaction with them. Directly interact with them. I do caution you, though. Take into consideration negative, negative interpretation. Okay, if somebody says this is a negative thing that I've run into every time I run into these people, keep it in mind. Okay, because it may be something that is necessary. Okay, but do not condemn an entire group of people or an entire way of life because of the interactions you've seen with some people. This does not, by the way, mean turn the other cheek and ignore the bad things. 
Quite the contrary. I, I am a firm believer in turning the other cheek. I am not a firm believer in getting dizzy. In other words, don't keep turning the other cheek. There comes a point where you have to stand up and say, this doesn't work. And the reality behind it from that end, and this is why I have a great deal of respect for the people that get involved in the military. In the military, in the first responders, as in your, you know, in the firemen, the police, the, the reserves, you know, the ambulance. The thing that people forget is the other side of the first responders. Okay, that's your parents. And I don't mean yours specifically. Parents in general, teachers, your grocery clerks, all of these people are dealing with critical issues in society. They are all necessary. Every individual in existence, quite frankly, is worth the same. This does not mean that financially they've got the same amount of money. Okay. Now, do I believe in a lot of, of the concepts that different groups have come up with? Absolutely. Now, here's another one that I agree with part of, but not the full thing. Where it comes to Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous, I absolutely agree with them that the first step to getting into healing is to look in the mirror and acknowledge and accept that you have a complication. Okay, take responsibility for your own actions. Absolutely necessary. Okay, now I would love to say I agree that you have to go out and open up old wounds and apologize to everybody. It seems to work for many. From my, from my own perspective, all the apologies in the world won't change what you did. But changing your behavior can change the way other people see you. Now, the other thing that I've noticed with them is they, the people I've talked to that are in, that are involved in AA have said always the same thing, virtually, and virtually always the same thing, that you have two types of alcoholics. You have the alcoholics and you have recovering alcoholics. But they seem to be, they seem to be told you have to continue going. You know, and you've got to go through this this weekly thing or this bi this this semi weekly thing, you know, these meetings, and they rely heavily on these meetings and what have you. The problem is, in my opinion, they tell you you will always be an alcoholic or you will always be a drug addict. Well, I'm living proof that is not always the case. Now, some people have told me that you were never an alcoholic. I don't know, twenty six a night, you know, twenty six or a night. And six lines of cocaine a night. Right, and you just quit counting after that. To me, this is not a good sign. But I can now sit with a 26er in my house for upwards of a decade. Okay. I mean, I only just finished one the other day, just at Christmas here. I finished a, 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 a 26er that I've had around for, like I said, a decade. So, to me, there are two types of alcoholics. Recovering, in like you've actually got three. Non-alcoholics are ones that have never gotten involved with alcohol on a negative run. Alcoholics are ones that got into it and are constantly drinking. Or pattern drinking. And then you have recovered alcoholics. Those are the ones that used to be either pattern drinkers or extremely heavy drinkers before, and now can actually sit down and have a drink or not their call, where there is no there is no urge to go and get the drink. There's no drive to go and get the drugs. Now these people do exist. They are rare. Okay, and I absolutely encourage you if you're if you're looking for a, a way out, go and get involved with one of these organizations because they will help you. At the very at the very worst, they are a coping mechanism so you don't stay drinking all the time. Okay. And it is something to celebrate when you make that change. When we take a look at the religion, most religions are telling you, you know, God, God is the creator. God is the person you should worship. 
and God made everything so worship God. But they'll turn around and tell you, fear God. Don't cross him because he's vindictive. Well, I'll tell you, having run into him myself, number one, he doesn't need worshipers. No actual God requires worshipers. Let's face it. If you think about it, if he created everything to start with, if he created man, if he created the planets, okay, if he created all of that, then why fear him? He certainly didn't need your in your worship before he created you. Okay, that wasn't a requirement. So why would he require the the, the worship now? That said, it is an idea to emulate what he did. In other words, work to create things, but don't get cocky. That's where things go sour. And that is what has created a lot of the problems in today's world. It is absolutely imperative now that we start working together and really turn the tide. Clear up your own home. Get things organized. Get the energy in your own house running in the right direction. Okay, to ensure that you're making headway in the right fashion. The right fashion being the one that makes you feel better without intentionally hurting other people. Now, I will still tell you, yes, I'm absolutely asking for your assistance in changing the energy pattern this world is following. I am absolutely, absolutely asking you, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let's get working together on a global front to make this world a better place for virtually everybody, okay? But at the same time, if you happen, happen to be a member of a church, a member of a temple, a member of a coven, carry on with that social side, okay? Those social groups are imperative in helping give you the spiritual strength to keep moving forward. But let go of the idea that you have to fear anybody that doesn't believe in exactly what you believe in. You all have free will. You all have freedom of choice. It's up to you whether you look down on other people. Okay. Now, I mean, I was, I was told by a member of the, of the Jehovah Witnesses one day that they would actually, that they would have invited me to church at the, you know, during Christmas one year. Except I wasn't dressed well enough. And as I told them then, if my, you know, if I said, if God comes to me and says, you're not dressing well enough, then yeah, I'm likely to take some and take into consideration what he's got in mind. But I'm not about to change the way I dress because somebody else is not happy with it. You know, the way I dress, what you see is the way I am. Okay, you run into me in person. I was even told one day if I wanted to talk to business people, I was going to have to get a suit and tie. And like I told the guy, I said, look, if people are looking to talk to me, if they want my insight into how their business is doing, and I've helped a lot of businesses turn their, turn their business around. If I, you know, if I, if they are insisting on me being in a suit and tie to talk to them, they're not interested in what I'm having to say. They're interested in whether I agree with them. Okay. And it doesn't work that well. Now, don't get me wrong. I have no, nothing against a suit and tie. Well, no, I have nothing against a suit. I have a very big problem around ties. But then I don't like things around my neck. So, we, are, we have to start looking in the, in the mirror and going, okay, what am I content with? What am I not content with? And I will tell you, it is so much easier to change the things that you're not content with you know, make minor changes, which is why this list here that I put together, this breaks down, and a chunk of this I'll get done today. This is just the start. Yeah, you can't read that. I'd have to bring it up closer. There is writing on it. I don't know if you can see it. doesn't really matter. But I broke it down, broke chunks of, of my office down to start clearing it out. And one, like, for instance, one of the big things was to get my calendar, which is, where the heck is it? Don't think you can. No, I'm blocking it. That shelf right there, that one, has a, a countertop, um, 
a countertop calendar on. I'm still very much a dinosaur. My calendar, I don't keep on the computer. I keep it written down. I don't keep it on my phone. My database for phone numbers and addresses is still done in a cardstock. Okay, it's still done on file cards. Very much like this. Okay, it's still done on cardstock. Many my age still know what these work like. And for me, at least with them, I can't have a power outage and lose them. Right, I don't end up with my data wiped out. There is not a person on the planet that can hack my computer to get at that database. Which is why when people are contacting me, I write it down. I don't necessarily keep it on, on file, as far as the computer goes. Right. Simply because I just don't see the purpose. Okay. But we have to start working together. And it's going to require assistance from those around you. You know, if you're not good at something, talk to somebody that is. Talk to somebody that's done what you're and what you're aiming for successfully. By doing that, you can get your life moving in the right direction. When I have mechanical problems, I go to a mechanic. Okay, it's just that easy. Yes, it costs a little bit of money, but the fact of the matter is, if I try and repair my own car, it's going to cost me a lot more. Okay. Now, I am winding this down actually really quick here, but again, I would love to hear your comments in the comments below. If you've got something to say or a question in literally any field, ask me in one of the contact points that is listed below this video, and I will do my best to get back to you. Okay, sometimes somebody will ask a question which will prompt me putting a specific topic up. Uh, okay, because I get the question a lot. One of the things that I am doing, though, by the way, and I'm going to deal with this in a little while, but this series, The Elder Balking Chronicles, on top of it being science fiction, science fantasy, I am including in it information on the way that soulmates work, past lives are interconnected, okay, what soul family is, how empathy works, you know, how, ma how magic works. That sort of thing. Okay, and I'm referring to true magic. Okay, but there was a saying say, that was said long ago that when you push technology to its ultimate level, there is little difference between it and magic. It's just a question of how to make it happen. Okay, now I will be back again tomorrow. But until then, take care of yourselves and each other. And for pity's sakes, stay positive.